All right, we are live. Hey, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward, with another live video Q&A. This one's for Friday, January 25th. And the way these video chats work is I'm going to be hanging out here for the next hour, answering questions and basically discussing strategies that you can implement to help you with your muscle building and fat loss goals any specific challenges that you may be dealing with when it comes to working out and following a proper nutrition plan, all that kind of stuff, we are gonna be discussing that today during our live video chat. So if you're brand new to these video chats, I wanna welcome you. It's always nice to have new people tuning in. And again, anything goes with this, anything fitness related, nutrition related, feel free to post those questions, comments into the video chat window and I'll do the best I can to help you out during our video chat. So before we get uh, started now, I just want to uh, uh, make sure that this is coming through loud and clear. You can hear me, see me, all that good stuff. So please, if this is coming through loud and clear, let me know uh, so that I'm not just talking to dead air out there. And uh, okay, I'm just going to get a couple things organized on my end here. Make sure that this is coming through smooth and clear and all that. All right. Seems to be coming through good, excellent. Thank you for the feedback, guys, I always appreciate it. Now, a uh, couple things I wanna discuss here. Uh, one thing that I've been doing recently with my own um, nutrition is, is I'm trying a new supplement, and this is something that I just started doing the past week, and it is collagen supplements. Now, you've probably heard a fair bit about it because it's, it's creating a lot of buzz online, the whole topic of collagen. And uh, the way I like to approach new supplements, nutritional supplements, is that I, I'm not the first one to jump on the bandwagon. You know, the, the way the supplement industry is, is there's so many new products coming and going. So, I mean, you're going to have, you know, every month or there's literally new products hitting the market that weren't there previously. Now, some of them are good, some of them not so good. I mean, a lot of it is you have to realize that it's the business of the, the supplement industry. I mean, they're trying to create new products in order to create a market and create business for themselves and generate income. I mean, that's the way business works. Not all products are worthwhile products. So the way I like to use or, or the way I like to go about buying new supplements is I follow uh, the, the, the rule where once a product starts to go mainstream to the point where you're hearing about it everywhere, and hearing about it from some very reputable sources, not just you know bros in the gym, but you're hearing about it from uh, doctors and it's, it's going mainstream and you're hearing a lot of buzz about it. At that stage, it's probably a good idea to, hmm, this might be worth looking into. And that's where collagen is. I mean, it's, it's at the stage now where it's, it's very mainstream. It's very, there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of doctors and a lot of, a lot of studies behind it. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna give this a shot for myself. So it's something that I've been doing now for the past, uh, it's only been a week, that's all, I've, I've started using it, and how I've been mixing it into my diet is, uh, I usually like take a, some collagen, mix it in with like a protein shake, mix it in with a blender smoothie, sometimes I'll mix it in with like a high protein oatmeal, just stir it in, and there's very little taste to it. I mean, there, there is kind of a, a weird taste, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, it's something that you really need to try in order to notice, but, if you mix it in with something else, like mix it in with a protein shake or with a smoothie or with your oatmeal, you're, you're really not going to notice it. So it's not going to have any uh, negative impact on the, the foods that you're consuming now. I mean, if, if you have it as an add-on. Uh, I started off for the first couple of days just having like a heaping teaspoon or sorry, heaping tablespoonful. And now I'm to the point where I'm using uh, a full protein scoop of collagen powder per day. That's what I'm shooting for. So maybe somewhere in the vicinity of 20 grams a day. That's if I had to guesstimate what it is I'm taking, 20 grams a day. And I'm gonna document this. So I'm gonna keep track of it and see how I notice my body changing, if I notice anything at all for that matter. Uh, ideally what you should find with, with collagen supplements is from a bodybuilding point of view, it should help with your joints. This is a big one because, you know, your joint cartilage, tendons and ligaments, all that stuff, the collagen can really help with that. It'll probably help with your skin and hair health and all that. So, I mean, that's a nice side benefit as well. But the big one that, I, that I'm looking at it for is I want to keep my joints strong and healthy. 
And so that's what I really want to see if I notice a difference with that. Because if, if, you're, if you have joint pain, that's going to hinder your workouts big time, right? There's, there's one thing that, that will slow down your progress in the gym, and that is aches and pains, especially joint pain. And that's what I really want to avoid, keep those joints strong and healthy, especially as I get older. So that's my main purpose for it, and that's what I'm going to be really looking out for. But a little side thing that I've noticed from it is I find that it helps to curb my appetite. It's, it's very filling, and collagen is a, like a slow digesting protein. So it does have that uh, it will like gel in your stomach, a slow digesting protein, kind of similar to, to uh, casein in that sense. So if, if you want to use this as kind of like as an appetite suppressant, which is pretty good in that sense, uh, I, I find that helpful because one of my goals as well is I want to kind of keep my body fat down and actually get leaner. So I find that, hey, if it can suppress my appetite a bit, that's, that's a good thing for me, you know, because it helps to control the, the calories and aid with fat loss. But for those of you who are probably in a bulking phase and trying to get more calories in, that may be a bit of a problem. So if you find that's the case, I'd recommend if you are going to try collagen supplements to take it later in the day, maybe like as your last uh, snack or meal or whatever before you go to bed. Uh, so it would actually provide like a slow digesting protein to help you throughout the night. And if it does curb your appetite at that stage, it doesn't matter because you got your food in you by that stage and it's not going to prevent you from getting uh, more calories in because taking it as the very last uh, meal of the day won't uh, have any negative impacts in terms of meeting your calories and meeting your macros for the day. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you. I'm going to be, uh, like I say, on an ongoing basis, providing some updates. I'll probably make some videos about it as well. But again, it, it's too soon for me to, to have any definite uh, impact or, or feedback to share about it because it's only been about a week since I've started using it. But you know, maybe after a month or so, I'll have some, some real world feedback to share. All right, let's, so let's jump in. I'm just going to basically answer some questions coming through here, whatever you want to discuss. So we have Woodulos is joining us. James is joining us. We have DCP Motown joining us. Uh, he's asking, what are the best fats for weight loss? Um, when it comes to fat, I recommend, if, if you're going to look for a way to add extra fat to your diet, focus primarily on omega-3s. That's the one that a lot of people are, are um, deficient in. You know, it's easy to get other fats in your diet. Omega-3s are the hard ones to get. That's the one that most people are deficient in. So things such as uh, natural sources, fatty fish like salmon, uh, mackerel, great sources of omega-3s, uh, grass-fed beef, you know, uh, another great source of omega-3s, uh, natural free-run eggs, another good source. Uh, but also supplementing your diet, like fish oil, great source of, of omega-3s, especially you get a high-potency fish oil supplement. Um, if you are going to buy a fish oil supplement, really check the label on this because, you know, you, you basically get what you pay for. Some fish oil supplements are very low-grade, the, the cheap ones, especially if you're going to find them, you know, in the bargain section at the, the drugstore or the grocery store, stuff like that. Uh, look at the label and look at actually how much EPA and DHA fatty acids are in there because those are the actual omega-3 fatty acids and you want to make sure that percentage-wise you're getting a high percentage of, of omega-3s for the amount of fat that you're consuming, for the amount of oil that's in the capsule. I mean a cheap one will probably have like 10 to 15 percent concentration of, of omega-3s whereas a good high quality one could have 50% or more of a concentration of omega-3s. Uh, the one that I use personally, it's a, a super concentrated omega-3. I'm, I'm not, I think somewhere in the vicinity of 60 to 70%. I have to double check the label on it. I'm not 100% sure, but it is a high potency uh, omega-3 fatty acid supplement. So that's one that you want to look for. Uh, some other good sources of omega-3s if you want to get uh, flaxseed oil, flax meal, uh, walnuts. These are some really good healthy fats to get your omega-3s in. So those are some that I would really recommend focusing on primarily. And it's not just for fat loss. This is something that you should take for overall health. Because like one of the things you need to realize when it comes to your overall health and fitness and building muscle and losing fat, it all goes together. right? It all is just like trying to run the machine, fuel the machine, you know, feed the muscle, 
feed your body, and then you want to burn the fat through regular exercise. So that's the way I look at the nutrition. Fuel the machine and then run that machine hard through regular training, through regular cardio, and use that as your tool to burn the body fat. Try not to take the starve the fat off your body approach because if you try and just starve the fat off, it's it's not the healthiest way to do it and it's not a long-term approach. But I prefer to try and think of eat more in terms of eat more good quality food and then burn more in terms of regular exercise and that is a healthy long-term sustainable approach. All righty, let's move on. We have Mark is joining us. Austin is joining us. Uh, Austin's asking about nuclei training. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'll have to look it up. It's probably a new, like like every time you, you someone's coming up with a new workout program, they'll put a name on it. I personally haven't heard of nuclei training myself, so it's something I'm going to look up. And I'm, I'm not going to take time from the video chat, but I don't have any feedback on it at the moment. Uh, Finney is joining us. Gene is joining us. Hey, he's joining us from Northern Ireland. Uh, James has got a question saying, Lee, I'm aiming to cut from 22% to 15% body fat. Do you have any advice for cutting while minimizing muscle loss? Would you focus on cardio or weight, squat intensity, volume, etc.? Thanks. Uh, you use both weight training and cardio. And how you go about it really depends on where you're starting from. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an individual thing. Like I, I can't really give a cookie cutter answer because I mean, maybe in your case, you're, you've been working out for years. You're very advanced with your workouts. I don't know. Maybe you're just getting back into it. So the specifics of, of the training routine is, is really an individual. Uh, but what I would recommend is if your main goal is fat loss, daily cardio. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, even if it's just getting outside and going for a walk. But daily cardio uh, is, is one of the best things you can do for burning body fat. As far as your weight training is concerned, three times a week would be the, the minimum. That's what I'd recommend. If you can handle more than that, then do so. A, a basic program that I recommend for a lot of people, and this is one that I actually follow myself right now, is alternating weight training one day and cardio the next weight training one day and cardio the next now that's a good general program for building muscle losing fat and improving your overall health and fitness but if you want to kind of move into a cutting phase where you're serious about your cutting i would bump up the cardio to daily and again the weight training maybe every other day or two days on one day off something along those lines to help maximize muscle growth uh, in the process and you can build muscle and lose body fat in, in the process if you do so properly you know with proper training proper nutrition and as far as the nutrition is concerned again think of eating more and burning more rather than eating less and burning less right eat more burn more burn the fat and feed the muscle right then I mean, Tom Venuto wrote a book on that years ago but it's, it's a great a great mindset to have when it comes to following a a program for fat loss as well as building lean muscle, right? Burn the fat through exercise, feed the muscle through good quality nutrition. Uh, Will's joining us says, what are your favorite side delt exercises? Side lateral raises, can't go wrong with those. I actually like the uh, the side lateral machine. If, if you have the weight stack machine at the gym, you know, where you can uh, do the side laterals. I really like that because it's a strict exercise. It allows you to handle a lot of weight and you can really push yourself to failure and beyond. So with that one, what I'll do is I'll usually, uh, you know, obviously start off late and do several progressively heavier warm up sets. But once you get to your top working weight, I mean, you can rep it out to failure and then even continue on with partial reps and really burn the crap out of the side delts. You can even do static reps. Uh, so that's one of my favorites is the uh, side delt machine at the gym. Uh, dumbbell side laterals, I like those as well. If you don't have access to that, you can certainly use those. Uh, one of the best ways that I like to do dumbbell side laterals is I like to go up and down the dumbbell rack. So I'll probably start off with, with light weight and then work my way up and then pyramid my way back down. And I find that that is a great way to really you know get a lot of time under tension, a lot of training volume and really hit the side delts hard. 
All right, we have another one. NS Snowmobiler says, I'm 16 years old from Cape Breton. I'm heavy built, currently 250 pounds, six foot tall. I curl 50 pound dumbbells. Pretty much all, pretty much all genetics, but I'm looking to lose weight. Help! All right. Uh, I, first off, I would ask about your diet. I would ask about your cardio. Those are the two things that you really want to nail down. I mean, as the weight training, you say you're you're well, you're, you're curling 50 pound dumbbells, which I mean that that's good to curl 50 pound dumbbells. But you, when it comes to the workouts, you want to focus on a well-rounded workout program that hits all your major muscle groups equally. And again, training and the nutrition, like I mentioned before, focus on burning the body fat through regular exercise and feeding the muscle through good quality nutrition. If, if you'd like some help with this, I mean, I have a basic program right on my website. It's called uh, The Three Keys to Building Muscle, right? It's, it's a free downloadable PDF. Just head on over to my website, leehayward.com. You can download it there. I also have a nutrition guide called Bodybuilding Nutrition Made Simple. You can download that as well. I mean, these ebooks cover the fundamentals. They'll cover enough stuff to help you get started, especially if, if you're brand new, you're not following a structured program. This will help give you that structure to get going. Then if you find that after following those basics that you do hit a plateau from there and you'd like some more help, maybe like a personalized or customized program, then you can send me a private message and we can kind of work out the, the, the details of, of what's probably causing you to plateau and where you can optimize the program. But it's, it's no point in going to a customized program unless you have the foundation first. So download those programs. Again, three keys to building muscle, bodybuilding nutrition made simple. That'll help get you started on the right track. And then if you do need some more help beyond that, send me a private message and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, Gene is asking, is branch chain amino acids during workouts okay and a protein shake with a scoop of creatine okay after workout? Yes, absolutely. Uh, BCAs during a workout is going to help to uh, keep your – it has an anti-catabolic effect. It's going to help you to prevent muscle breakdown while you're training. Uh, in fact, what a lot of people are doing now is instead of taking – excuse me, instead of taking BCAs, they're taking EAAs, essential amino acids, which do include all the branch chain amino acids, the three branch chain amino acids, but it includes all the other essential amino acids. So if you're going to look for an amino acid supplement, uh, I would recommend an essential amino acid versus just a branch chain. Now, if you already got branch chain amino acids, you can still use them. I mean, don't feel like you wasted your money or anything like that. You can still use them up. But when you go looking for your next amino acid supplement, look for an essential amino acid product, not just a branch chain amino acid product. And as far as post-workout shake with creatine, that's fine as well. All right, Eric's joining us. What do you think of weightlifting wrist wraps? Wrist wraps, uh, I wear them all the time. And they're good for supporting the wrists. Now, you need to look at why are you wearing them. Uh, for myself, the reason why I wear wrist wraps is because I have a, a mild case of carpal tunnel syndrome, and I find that the wrist wraps help to control it. So by using those wraps, it, it just prevents my carpal tunnel from acting up. So that's the main reason why I wear it. And most of my workout videos, if you, you watch them, I'm usually wearing wrist wraps, and that's the reason why. Uh, a lot of power lifters will wear them, especially if they're doing heavy presses, like heavy bench presses or, or something like that. Uh, you can also use wrist straps to help assist your grip. So with power lifters, they usually use them either with bench pressing to help support the wrist, so to keep it all locked in line. So when you're doing heavy presses, you're not going to strain your, your, your uh, wrist. But you can also use them to help assist your grip. And how you would do this is you make a fist and then put the wrist strap on very tight, and it actually helps to hold your fist closed. So it's, it's a strategy that power lifters, will, power lifters will use to increase their grip strength. Uh, do a search for Lee Hayward uh, wraps, straps, and chalk. I think that's what I call it. And I go into, or, or wait, no, there's another video. Scrap that one. I've got a couple of videos on this. One that explains what wrist straps and straps and chalk are. Another one explains how to wear wrist straps and explains, you know, how to wrap your wrists for wrist support as well as uh, wrapping your wrists for a general support or increasing your grip. So I, I can't remember the exact title, but just do a search for Lee Hayward wrist wraps. 
you know, go to YouTube, Lee Hayward wrist straps, and you should find that video. There's, like I said, probably a couple of them there. And again, if you got questions about it, watch them all, right? Because I mean, there's, there's information there that will definitely help you. And then there's also some tips there on how to choose the best type of wrist straps and all that. All right, moving on, we have DCP Motown, Motown. I'm not sure if it's Motown or Motown. He says, uh, Lee, I'm following your three rules for fat loss over 40, and I love it. Good stuff. Glad, glad that it's working for you, and uh, thank you for the feedback. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, all right. Greetings from Romania from Darius. Um, okay, we have Anthony joining us. He says, when doing leg raises on the floor, should there be a gap between my lower back and the floor at the beginning and ending of the movement? Um, and that really depends on your arch. Like, we all have a bit of an arch in our lower back, and you may have a bit of a, a gap there. One thing that I find helpful for uh, just making the exercise more comfortable is place your hands flat on the floor and underneath your, your butt cheeks as you're doing lying leg raises on the floor. Um, that generally helps to just elevate your hips a little bit, will help to take some of that arch out of your lower back and make the movement a little bit more comfortable. So you can experiment with that. Um, if, if you want, you can, I know, I know I have a few body weight workouts where I'm showing this exercise and you can see how I'm doing it. Or you can even just do a, a just a regular search for lying leg raises on the floor. And you'll probably see some people will, will do them that way where they actually put their hands, palms down, and, and just, just tuck them behind your, your you know, right on this, under your butt cheeks, right? And by doing that, it just helps to position your hips, right? It gives you a little bit of elevation and tilt on the hips which flattens out some of the arch in your lower back and just makes the movement a lot more comfortable. Okay, we have Games Daily saying, good morning from Australia. So I guess you're, you're writing me from the future, right? You're, 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 in, you're in the future, and I'm, I'm back here. You're Saturday morning. I'm back here Friday afternoon. All right, well, good day to you. Uh, Okay, Dom Wow is asking, how much you bench, old man? How much do I bench? Right now, probably not a whole lot. The most I've ever benched was 445 pounds, but I certainly wouldn't do that now. Uh, usually when I'm doing a bench press workout, I'll go maybe 225 and just rep it out. That's, that's usually the heaviest I'll go at this stage of the game. Uh, I really, I find that if I try and push myself, like do you know a max out or one rep max or anything like that, it's the risk to reward the risk to reward ratio is not in my favor i'm more likely going to pull or strain my shoulders or, or you know mess something up so i like to keep moderate weight and do higher repetitions and just basically focus on pumping up the pecs rather than seeing how much i can bench and that, that kind of applies to all my exercises i rarely in fact i it's been years since i've done a one rep max in, in any of the big lifts uh, what do you think about full body workouts? I love full body workouts. I think that they are great, not just for beginners, but for advanced lifters as well. You can use, you know, th there's all kinds of different training splits, right? You know, you can do a, a one body part a day. You can do, you know, like push, pull legs, upper, lower split, total body. There's pros and cons to all of them. But the thing that I like the most about a full body workout is it allows you to hit all your major muscle groups very frequently. So uh, obviously you're, you're going to be limited in the number of exercises you can do per workout, but one of the things that you can do to make a full body workout really effective is when you're going through them, you can have like two or three different full body workouts that you do. So you're hit getting exercise variety and training frequency over the course of the week. You know, some people think that you can only do one full body workout, like you have to do the exact same workout every single time, which is great for a beginner who's just getting into it. But as you become more advanced, you can have a structure in place where maybe you're doing three or four full body workouts and each one has different exercises for all the major muscle groups. So as you go through the cycle of full body workouts, you're getting the training variety that you would normally get through, say, like a, a, a body part split routine, but you're spacing it out over the course of the week. So 
you know, the, we, we can go on and on about this, but bottom line, full body workouts, they're, they're not just for beginners, right? You, you can use them as a very advanced training strategy to make some really good gains. All right. Uh, Adaptive Android says, do you think powerlifters can benefit from beta alanine or just bodybuilders? It's, it's an optional supplement. I mean, it's not one of those products that is a must have. In fact, they're, they're really, you know, in a greater scheme of things, there are no true must have supplements. Uh, but beta alanine can definitely help uh, a powerlifter as well. I mean, it just helps to increase uh, blood flow to the muscles, helps to increase your strength and energy. I mean, yeah, I mean, two products that can definitely help bodybuilders and powerlifters in terms of strength and performance, creatine and beta alanine. You can take both of those and really reap some good benefits. And th there's a lot of similarities between like a nutritional supplement for a powerlifter and nutritional supplements for bodybuilders, even though the, the training is, is very different. You know, powerlifters are using their muscles in order to lift maximum weight, whereas bodybuilders are using the weight in order to build maximum muscle. So it, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences as well. But as far as the nutrition is concerned, uh, it, there's a lot of carryover because building lean muscle and building strength, as far as nutrition is concerned, they, they go, go hand in hand. Okay. Um, Mark is joining us. He says, Lee, uh, big forearms are my number one goal. I like to direct forearm exercises. I like to do direct forearm exercises like wrist curls, reverse easy curls, hammer curls. How many days a week can I do direct forearm exercises? I work out four to five times a week. Um, frequent forearm work would be uh, one of the better ways to go about it. So in this case, I would recommend maybe twice a week for the direct forearm work wrist curls and, and, and reverse curls and all that kind of stuff. But another one that you can do as well to, to supplement that is grip training. Uh, you never mentioned anything about direct grip training. And this is kind of like that neglected element of forearms. Just show you what I'm talking about here. Heavy grips, hand grippers. Phenomenal tool for building up your forearms. Not only will it help to increase your grip strength, but it will help to fill out your forearms as well. because a lot of people think, you know, the grip strength is the hands, but there's actually very little muscle in your hands. It's mostly just tendons and ligaments. The muscles that activate, you know, your grip, and you can even, you know, see it, like you can just play around with it. When I open and close my hands, what's happening? My forearms are, are moving. So it's your forearms that activate your grip. So when you train your grip, you're actually building a lot of forearm muscle. So if you want to maximize your forearm development, work on your grip strength and heavy grips hand grippers a phenomenal tool i carry these on my website again head on over to leehayward.com and, and you can order them i also have uh, some forearm training manuals that come along with these uh, there's a hand gripper training manual as well as a forearm training guide there as well so this that can definitely help but there's a lot of other grip exercises i mean you can just go on YouTube and or go on Google and search for, for different grip training exercises. There's a lot of stuff you can do, like plate, plate pinching, uh, you know, different types of finger exercises. There, there's a lot of stuff you can do for your grip. Uh, farmer's walk, you know, is another great exercise for the grip. But the stronger your grip, the bigger and more meatier your forearms are going to get. So definitely don't neglect that. And as far as how, how I would structure it, you could probably start off twice a week, and then if you want, you can bump it up to every other day. I find that every other day is, is probably the most that you would want to train your, your grip because you still want to have that, that day off in between each workout in order to allow the joints, tendons, and ligaments to rest and recover. And that's one of the things with recovery. It's, it's more than just muscle recovery. You need to allow time for the, the tendons and ligaments to recover as well. And that's why I recommend uh, you know every other day to give you that adequate recovery between training sessions. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, what foods can help increase testosterone naturally? Uh, this, there's a lot of stuff that you can focus on. Basically, good, natural, unprocessed foods. Uh, one of the things that you definitely want to avoid if you want to maximize optimal hormone levels is processed foods, processed junk foods, uh, processed meats. 
anything that's, you know, when, when you buy foods, if it has a nutritional label on it with a whole bunch of ingredients that you can't even pronounce, that's probably not the best thing to consume. Natural basic foods, fruits, vegetables, lean meats, fish, uh, you know, rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, basic stuff, basic foods that don't need a nutritional label. That's what your diet should be made up of. So, for example, if you go to the produce section of the grocery store and you're shopping around. None of that stuff has a nutrition label because it's just a one ingredient food, right? You're buying broccoli, you're buying potatoes, you're buying, you know, carrots and, and, and turnips and whatever. I mean, you're buying one ingredient foods. You go to the meat section, right? You're buying steak or chicken or pork or fish or whatever. There's no nutrition label on it because you're buying one ingredient foods. So that's the type of stuff that you want the majority of your diet to be made up of natural unprocessed foods now to help bump up the testosterone uh some things that i would definitely recommend uh red meat in moderation especially if you can get like grass-fed red meat and uh, ideally even different types of red meat like bison ph phenomenal source of protein very nutrient dense uh, whole eggs another good one especially if you can get free range eggs that would definitely be a a good one to help good quality protein good healthy fats and it's definitely going to help with your uh, testosterone production uh, vegetables green vegetables uh, lots of, of veggies this is kind of like the neglected food for for most people like a lot of guys are focusing on their protein carbs and fat but they're not thinking of the micronutrients you know the the, the vitamins and the minerals and the enzymes and, and all these you know the phytochemicals that you're going to get through uh, good quality vegetables and that's something that you definitely want to include in your diet if you want to bump up your testosterone and help to just improve your overall health as well so a lot of times like people are looking for a, a testosterone boosting diet but you want to think of like a health boosting diet because if your health is optimal then your your, your hormones are going to be optimal as well all right, moving on, we have James is asking, what's your personal preference for building muscle and putting on mass? I, what, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. I'm not sure if there's a, per, what's your personal preference for putting on, for building muscle and putting on mass? High calorie diet, weight training workouts, progressive overload. I, I, again, if, if you if you want to elaborate on that, James, please do so. And, and in the meantime, I'm just gonna move on to, a, Another question, uh, Ant Antoine or Anton is joining us. Uh, have some serious lower back pain. How would I treat this? I do deadlifts, squats, bent over rows, overhead presses. I and I get pain in the lower back, especially during bent over rows. All right, there's there's a lot of things that could be wrong there. I mean. It, it's kind of hard to just pinpoint based on the fact that you're getting pain. Stretching and mobility work for the lower back is is huge. I mean, if, if this has been going on for a while, I, I personally would probably even go re go check out with a, a chiropractor or, or a physiotherapist or someone could, who can check you out physically and in person and see if there's any mobility or, or any imbalances that need to be corrected. Because sometimes, you know, you may need to get your spine realigned. Like you see guys doing that with chiropractors, getting their, their spinal you know, realigned and stuff like that. So it means it could, could be something along those lines. It could be just a, a weak lower back. I mean, if, if you've been doing these exercises and you're just getting into them, uh, sometimes if, if you do too much too soon, that causes a lot of back pain. And, you know, stretching afterwards, again, there's there's so many things that could potentially cause back pain. It, it's really hard for me to just to, to, to know through a comment alone. You really want to work with somebody personally who can see your physique and go through and, and take you through some mobility exercises and pinpoint exactly what it is that could be causing this problem. Uh, one thing that may you may find helpful, and this is like a good overall therapeutic thing you can do for your back, is an inversion table. I've got one myself. I made a video about it. If you just do search for Lee Hayward inversion table, this is a great thing to, to do on a regular basis because it helps to decompress your spine. So it's, it's kind of like a unique spinal stretch that you won't get from any other type of stretching because, again, when you invert your body, you just totally decompress it, and, and it feels really good, very therapeutic on the back. So that's something that you might want to look into getting. Uh, but in, in the meantime, 
I, I would book an appointment with a chiropractor or a physiotherapist and have them check you out in person because it's it's one of those things you just don't want to leave it untreated, right? Figure out exactly what's going on here. Okay, uh, Glenn is asking, said I have questioned, I, ha I asked a question two weeks ago about supersets and compound sets. When is a good time to put them into your workouts in the beginning of the month or at the end? Um, unless you have some sort of training program, a real like doing a, a, a superset at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month, I uh, really doesn't make much difference. I mean, you need to look at, okay, supersets. When, when, when would be a good time to do them? And you need to look at your overall workout program, what it is that you're training for. A superset is basically doing two exercises back to back with very little rest in between. So it's a great way to uh, get more training volume in a given unit of time. So if you're pressed for time, you can use supersets to help speed up your workouts. Uh, I like to do supersets for ag agonist and antagonist muscles. Prime example, like do a set of bicep curls and then set of tricep extensions. You know, you really get a good pump that way. And it, it works very well when you're doing opposing muscle groups. You know, same thing. You could do like uh, leg extensions, leg curls. Uh, you could do like a, a chest and a back exercise. You can move back to back. And it's a really great way to just get a lot of training volume in a shorter period of time. So as far as doing them at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month, uh, that really depends on your overall training structure and what it is that you're working towards. I mean, I'd, I'd need to know more about you, your goals, and what it is that you're, you're training for in order to give you like a, a, a overview for the month of how to structure your workouts. It's kind of a, a personal question in that regard. So, I mean, if, if this is something you'd like some help with, I mean, and this applies for anybody watching this, you know, head on over to my website, shoot me an email, and if you want, we can, you know, discuss, a, we can jump on the phone and discuss a strategy that works best for you. Because a lot of this stuff, I'm just kind of giving generic basic answers, but everybody has their own individual situation, right? So, I mean, what I'm saying may apply to one person, may not necessarily apply to another. So, if you would like some personalized help with this, uh, you know, we, we can jump on the phone and discuss, a, you know, a customized training approach that would work best for you. All right, Robert says he's going to try the cardio advice. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome, Robert. Um, what else we got? Oysen is saying, do I need to finish high school in order to have a, a successful fitness career? I would say yes. I mean, high school is like the bare bones basic level of education. Get a high school diploma, for God's sakes, yes. Get your high school. Don't quit high school and to look for, for a fitness career. Um, all right, Stanley says he's joining us from Germany. Um, Steven's saying, should you train abs if your body fat is 17%? You should train your abs regardless of your body fat. I mean, the abdominal muscles have nothing to do with you know, the body fat that's covering them. I mean, you still want a strong core regardless if you're, you know, fat or lean. So, yeah, I, I recommend training abs regardless of your body fat percentage. Um, all right, Robert's asking, you can, oh, you know, he's, that's not asking me. He's commenting somebody else. Never mind. Uh, Azim is joining us. He said, Lee, what's a good, what's good for a beginner or someone coming back after years, uh, full body or five by five, a basic full body program. Five by five is not a beginner's program. All right. I, I know some people think it is, but it's not. I mean, I, I guess it all depends on what your definition of a beginner is. Right. But I mean, the average beginner, i.e. someone who's never been to the gym before, you are a beginner. You can't do squats. You can't do heavy bench presses. You can't be doing heavy deadlifts and, and rows and overhead presses and all that. These are more advanced exercises. A beginner needs to start with the bare bones basic, you know, just learn how to move their body and, and master some basic fundamental exercises. So I would not recommend a beginner to do a five by five program. That is, you know, intermediate to advanced level training, right? So 
If, if you're coming back to the gym after years or you're a beginner, uh, a basic beginner's full body workout is a great place to start. And I have a sample right on my YouTube channel. Just go to the main yeah, YouTube page right there on the beginner's playlist. Uh, there's a beginner's total body workout. We have Saul joining us. He says he's a huge fan. He appreciates the content. Well, thank you, Saul. I appreciate your comment. You're very welcome. Uh, we have Lucas joining us. He says, Lee, looking good on the After 40 program. Thank you much. Feeling good on the After 40 or Over 40 program. Age is just a number, as they say, right? But uh, thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Uh, we have the as Dessa 11 says, Lee, what are your top three tips for an advanced lifter trying to drop from 17% body fat to 10% body fat? Daily cardio be number one. I, I've personally found throughout the years, I know cardio works really well when I'm trying to lose body fat. I, I know you're going to hear mixed opinions and reviews. Like some people say, oh, you don't need to do cardio, whatever. But from my experience from competing in bodybuilding, when I do daily cardio, I get better results. Right? If I just try and lose fat with diet alone, it doesn't work as well as when I combine diet and daily cardio. So that's what I focus on primarily. Um, as far as the nutrition is concerned, you obviously want to be in a caloric deficit, but try and eat as much high quality, high volume foods as you can. So I focus on lean protein and lots of veggies. Fill your belly with protein and veggies as your primary food sources, and then fill in the gaps afterwards with, you know, carbs and, and healthy fat. But make sure that every time you sit down to a meal, you're filling up on protein and veggies first. Daily cardio, uh, of course, sticking with your weight training program. I mean, that's a, a, a given. I mean, you're, you're not going to stop weight training just because you're following a cutting program. In fact, that becomes even more important in order to maintain your muscle while you're cutting. Uh, what else? I already give you, I don't know, another tip. Fasted cardio works really well, and there's two times that you can do fasted cardio throughout the day. Obviously, first thing in the morning is a great one. And another time that you can do fasted cardio is right after your weight training workouts. So if you want to bump up your fat loss, I would recommend uh, after every weight training workout, do at least 20 minutes of low intensity cardio. I mean, it could be stepper, the, the treadmill, the elliptical cycle, whatever. Uh, but after every workout, just don't leave the gym after you finish your weight training. You head on over and do at least 20 minutes of, of cardio after each weight training workout. And that will be a great time to uh, really tap into burning some extra body fat. So those are a few tips that you can use to help speed up the fat loss process. And I'll give you one more. Consistency. <laughs> a lot of people, they, they go on a fat loss diet. They'll try it for a few weeks or something like that, and then they get frustrated and quit. This is something you have to do day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. Don't think of this as some short-term quick fix. It has to be done consistently. Okay. Uh, a lot of people underestimate uh, how long it's going to take to lose body fat. Give yourself the time to lose it. Don't try and do it in a few weeks. All right, Pedro's joining us. He says, in your professional experience, is cardio or high-intensity training the best for love handles and lower body fat? Both. <laughs> you need cardio and you need high-intensity weight training. You need both. Uh, Azim is joining us. Any plans for taking us back down memory lane? Um, do elaborate on that. I don't. What, what do you mean by memory lane? Just, just any memory lane stories at all? I mean, I, I've got forty years of memory lane stories that I could share. Please elaborate. Uh, love Mal, Mal Horta or Hot. Hot anyway, I am. What's your take? What? to take after SARMs, LGD and MK66. I don't know. I've never used SARMs, so I don't have any feedback on that. Uh, James says, Lee, do you believe natural testosterone boosting supplements work? It, it depends on the supplements. There, there are a lot of different quote-unquote testosterone boosting supplements. Some definitely do have benefits. You know, They've been shown to have some positive benefits. A lot of it's probably just marketing hype. Uh, I, I would focus on sound nutrition first. 
Like really just focus on, on sound quality nutrition and try and bump up your, your, I may, I mentioned this a few questions back. Like the same type of diet that you eat for optimal health is going to help you with optimal testosterone. Cause it all, it's all correlated. I mean, if you are healthy, your body is functioning properly and you're consuming high nutrient foods and, and avoiding the processed junk food, that's going to improve your health. And it's also going to improve your testosterone. So I would focus on that first. As far as supplements, um, so some things that you definitely want to look into, vitamin and mineral support, vitamin D3, zinc, magnesium, B6. These are some things, you know, that, that should be fundamental in, in your diet plan. Uh, adequate fats, especially the omega-3s, that's definitely going to help as well. You know, I, I would look into that kind of stuff before going for a specific testosterone boosting supplement. And, and even then, do your homework because this is, is a – kind of a gray area and a lot of companies are they're capitalizing on the the desire for testosterone boosting supplements uh, I, I made a video about this a while back talking about some, some of the testosterone scams that are out there you know I, i've seen companies literally take like protein powder and put it in capsules and then market it as a testosterone booster right and charge ridiculous amounts of money for for basically a bs product so be very cautious when you're buying a product labeled as a testosterone booster because a lot of times it's it could be you know a crock of BS. You really want to do your homework and do your research on it. Uh, Mr. Paperclip82 says, do you need high volume when working out one muscle group a week, five day split? Example, five sets of 12 to 15 reps. Honestly, the volume is going to depend on your fitness level, your work capacity, so it, it's really an individual question. But generally speaking, if you're working one muscle group a day, like hitting each major muscle group once a week, uh, you would probably do a higher volume per workout than you would if you were doing like a, a upper or lower body split or full body workout or something like that. So yeah, generally when you're training each body part once a week, you're going to do more volume per body part for that workout. But if you look at the volume for the total week, it's probably going to be pretty close to the same. Okay. Azim is joining us. Says Lee, you've been a professional bodybuilder for years, and you told us that you your training to come, make a comeback. Really looking forward to, to uh, seeing you succeed. I gotta clarify that I'm not I'm not a professional bodybuilder. I've been a competitive bodybuilder. There's a big difference. I've never won a pro card. I'm not an IFBB pro or anything like that. I've been a competitive bodybuilder for years, not a pro bodybuilder. Big difference. But thanks nonetheless. I'm looking forward to making a comeback in on the amateur level. I mean, again, like I say, I'm, I just compete as an amateur. I'm not a pro. Uh, really, I have no desire to be to take it to that level. First off, I don't think that I have the genetics to, to make it as a pro bodybuilder. And quite honestly, the, the work that would be required and the, the sacrifices that would have to be made, um, to me, it's, it's just not worth it. I mean, I, I, I love bodybuilding as a hobby, but to take it to the professional level, it's, it's kind of pushing it beyond just a hobby at that stage, right? I mean, it's kind of like, your, the whole focus of your life. And, and this applies to anything. I mean, you look at professional athletes in general, like you just don't accidentally become a professional athlete. You basically have to dedicate your entire life to whatever it is that you're pursuing in order to take it to that top level. And I, I, while I love bodybuilding and I love working out and all that, I don't love it to the point where I'm willing to sacrifice my life for it. All right. Okay, moving on. Another question here. Uh, we have Love Mal Hortas saying, Sir, you skipped my question. Do we need PCT after SARMs? I didn't skip your question. I said, I've never used SARMs. I don't have any feedback to offer about that. Uh, you know, just a heads up this is not a steroid related video chat. Like, I'm not a steroid guru or whatever. So if, if you're looking for specific information about performance enhancing drugs, then there's, there's other channels and, and venues out there that have a lot more, a lot more experience and a lot more uh, advice that they can offer about performance enhancing drugs. That's not my specialty. So, you know, 
I wish you the best for it, but I'm just being honest. All right. I'll, I'll help you in areas that I can help you, but in areas that I, I'm not qualified or I don't have a lot of experience, I'm not tr going to try and, and bullshit you and, and make up stuff. So, I mean, if, if I don't know the answer to something as in, you know, performance enhancing drugs, then I'm not going to try and make it up. So I'm not skipping your question. I'm just being honest. All right. Let's see what else we've got. Um, do powerlifting exercises like bench press, deadlifts, squats, and push, pull, ups, and bar dips? Uh, I'm not sure if that was a question. It's just as All right. Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of chat going on amongst the, the viewers in the in the chat, which is cool. So maybe I'm I'm reading comments directed to somebody else. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, okay, Azim's saying, you made a video where you shared your notes. Any chance of taking us to your dad's and your first gym? Actually, I made a video about that, Azim. If you go, oh, sh I, I, Lee Hayward's first home gym or something like that, if you do a search for that on YouTube, you should see it. But I did uh, make a video where I... I did like a little virtual tour of my very first home gym that's over in my parents' basement. It's still there. Now, it's kind of turned into more of a storage room than anything. But the original home gym that I started training at is still down there in my father's basement. And uh, if, if you do a search, I think it's like Lee Hayward's first home gym or something like that. I, I can't remember. But go through some of my older videos. I posted a few years back. So you need to scroll through some old videos. But uh, it, it's it's definitely there. I, I know I did make a video outlining that. Okay, moving on. I'm currently using whey protein, glutamine as supplements, and I'm not overweight and trying to lose weight. Can I also use creatine? Yes, you can use protein, glutamine, and creatine all together. They will definitely have you know help you with your muscle building goals. Absolutely. Okay. Haley, what's your opinion about training once for once every two days as follows? Day one, chest uh, and shoulders and biceps. Um, and I don't think it came through very good, but as far as the, the question, what's my opinion training once every two days? Uh, I, that's basically working out every day, every other day, sorry. I'm a big fan of that. I've made my best gains throughout the years by training every other day. Having a full day of rest in between each workout, I find that that, for most people, it works really well because it just gives you that extra recovery time to maximize your gains. One of the problems that a lot of young guys have is, is they're so eager to work out. They're, they're so caught up in, in the training that they want to work out every single day. And unless you have an incredibly you know uh, fast recovery and and high work capacity it's hard to make gains every other or working out every single day you'll probably make better gains working out every other day and i'm speaking from experience because when i was younger i was i was in this track you know i was so so obsessed with working out i was working out every single day you know two three hours a day and tried to do it day after day after day and yes it worked for a while but then I started to learn more about recovery, especially as, as Dorian Yates came out of the scene, you know, and he started dominating bodybuilding throughout the mid 90s, right? Because this is right in the heyday when I was getting involved with competitive bodybuilding. And Dorian Yates was the reigning Mr. Olympia. And I was watching, you know, reading his stuff where he was talking about he was focusing on, you know, less volume and more recovery time and all this. And I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll give that a shot. So I actually started to scale back the volume of my workouts and focus on getting more recovery. So instead of working out every single day, I'm working out every other day. And lo and behold, it actually worked, right? The more recovery time that I gave myself, the better gains that I made. I actually felt strong and rested and refreshed every time I went to the gym versus feeling beat down and, and exhausted. So I found that Having that full day of rest in between each workout allowed me to hit the gym, train harder, and actually make better gains because of it. And I think a lot of guys would probably benefit from that. Now, of course, it's an individual thing. Some people probably have a super high work capacity and they can get away with more frequent workouts. But um, for, for, for the average person, 
every other day is probably going to be your best bet when it comes to uh, maximizing muscle gains. Okie dokie, moving on. Uh, all right, how's the weather in Newfoundland and other parts of Canada? Uh, I don't know about other parts of Canada, but right here, it's actually very warm out. We, we, we go through a lot of ups and downs with the weather in terms of, uh, you know, like, where we're an island out in the North Atlantic, depending on the way the wind blows, it could be freezing one day and, and warm the next. And today, it's actually quite warm. It got up to uh, 15 degrees Celsius here today, which for for January, I mean, that's that's nuts. Like, all the snow has melted. I got green grass on my front lawn now. So, yeah, the, the weather is very warm today. But like say now, in a couple days' time, it might be a foot of snow on the ground and freezing again. But, yeah, today was a great day. Uh, next one, the viral plug is saying in one year, three months gym membership, is it okay to say, what? In one year, three months gym membership, is it okay to stay fit? I'm not sure what you mean. If you, you mean like over the course of one year working out for three months, is that okay to stay fit? Well, three months is better than no months, but if you want to stay fit, you want to work out on a regular basis all year long, not just for three months. I think that's what you're asking in the question. I could be wrong. Uh, Aman is joining us and he says, I'm having trouble with lower chest development, even doing dips and decline presses. Um, Basically, when it comes to the chest, like a lot of people think, okay, I want to focus on the upper chest, I want to focus on the lower chest, inner chest, outer chest. Just, just build a bigger chest, right? Don't get too hung up on, on the specifics. Just if 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 you build your chest bigger, you build your chest stronger, it's going to get bigger and stronger all over. So don't go trying to isolate it until you just add some mass, right? Focus on getting stronger in all the key lifts. Focus on getting stronger in your bench press. Focus on getting stronger with push-ups, with with the dips and all that kind of stuff. If, if you just get stronger and add some overall mass to your chest, chances are you're going to notice an overall improvement. Uh, another thing that you might find as well, again, without seeing you personally, it's kind of hard for me to, to know, but if you're carrying excess body fat, that's going to blur the, the whole definition and, and muscularity of your chest, right? So a lot of times guys who have excess body fat, they'll say, well, I, I, you know, I can't work my inner chest or my lower chest or whatever, because it's just covered in fat, you know? So if that's the case, the leaner you get, the more your muscle definition detail is going to show as well. So that, that could be a, a factor for some people and for sure. But bottom line, don't get too hung up on, on trying to isolate different parts of your chest. Just try and build a bigger chest overall. All right, let's move on. Casey's asking, deadlifts and sprints, good for fat burn? Well, deadlifts is a great exercise for your back. Sprints is a, a good high-intensity uh, cardio exercise. I mean, yeah, you can definitely use those as part of a fat loss program, but ultimately it's going to come down to your diet, right? I mean, if you're eating like crap, even if you're deadlifting and sprinting, you can still gain fat or at least not lose fat. Ultimately, what's going to burn the body fat is the regular training, plus consistent diet. You need to have it all. Anthony's joining us. He says, is it true that everyone has a target heart rate zone that optimally burns body fat? And if you exceed this heart rate zone, it's burning carbs, not fat. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. I mean, bottom line, if, if you're burning more calories than you consume, you're going to be tapping into burning body fat as well. How, however, with that being said, yes, you can adjust your cardio intensity so that you're doing more lower intensity cardio and thus burning more body fat. Now, th the way I like to look at it is not so much from the, the, just the cardio itself. I look, I like to look at the bigger picture of what's going on with your overall workout program. So in the case of someone who's doing weight training and cardio, which pretty much, you know, a lot of people who are in the gym for physique enhancement, meaning you're, you're trying to build muscle and lose fat. Most of us are doing some combination of weight training and cardio. You want to do high intensity weight training with progressive overload. So you're focusing on getting stronger in the weight training exercises 
And the cardio tends to be more of a supplemental fat burning exercise for, for most people who are into bodybuilding. That's generally the way it goes. So the way I like to structure a workout is have that high intensity, progressive overload strength training supplemented with the low intensity cardio for helping to aid with body fat. And uh, it, what this will also do is it provides active recovery exercise. So you, if, if you combine high intensity weight training one day and low intensity cardio the next, it has a nice complementary effect of allowing you to exercise on a regular basis while still allowing your body to recover because the, the low intensity cardio is a great active recovery from the high intensity weight training. So that's that's the way I, I personally like to do it. And now, if, if you're just doing one or the other, like let's just say, for example, your, your only form of exercise is cardio, then, you know, you could probably even do the same thing with just cardio, right? You could have a high intensity cardio day and a low intensity cardio day. But for people who are doing weight training and cardio, prioritize the weight training and have the cardio as a fat burning supplement to go along with it. All right. Um, Uh, Zim is saying, you mentioned performance-enhancing substances, drugs in sport. Is it true or is it exaggerated? Uh, pretty much every sport out there will have some form of performance-enhancing substances, and not just bodybuilding. This this goes across the board. I mean, e everything from uh, if if you uh, I tell you a good um, a good video to watch on this. It's been around for a while. Watch bigger, faster, stronger documentary. It, it's a good overall. Uh, documentary about the use of performance enhancing substances, drugs, steroids, performance enhancing drugs in all areas. So different sports, uh, also in different uh, venues in terms of mental sports or, or um, what's what I'm trying to think here. Not just from a, a physical and strength point of view, but even from mental and concentration point of view. For example, like a lot of um, the interviewed guys who are fighter jet pilots, I mean, they take performance enhancing drugs to help calm their mind and to focus, right? They're talking about uh, musicians who take uh, beta blockers to help calm their nerves when they're performing on, on stage in, in front of hundreds or thousands of people, right? There's performance enhancing drugs in virtually every venue or, or activity that's out there. It's not just bodybuilding. Right. I mean, it applies to other sports in terms of, you know, an endurance sport, a strength sport, performance of any type. Chances are there are at some level performance enhancing substances. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely true. It's, it's not exaggerated. Right. You go to the top of any game, you're going to see people doing whatever they can to uh, maximize their performance. Uh, can I take a weight gainer or a protein powder? I personally recommend a protein powder over weight gainers. That's my personal take on it because a weight gainer is generally carbohydrates and protein, and a lot of times the carbohydrates are not the best. You know, there could be a lot of sugars, dextrin, and uh, malt dextrin, and whatever. A weight gainer, unless, yeah. Like I say, it really depends on the situation, but overall, a weight gainer is probably going to end up causing you to gain more excess body fat than you like. So I would recommend uh, supplementing with a good quality protein powder, and then as far as you know, getting your extra carbs and fat, do that through solid food. Most people can eat enough carbs and fat through their diet alone. It's usually protein that's the hardest one to get. So that's where supplementing with protein can be helpful. How do you avoid losing muscle when you're trying to get ripped? Uh, making sure that you train hard and heavy with weight training so that you're still training in a progressive overload fashion, at least trying to train in a progressive overload fashion. It doesn't always work out because sometimes as you lower your calories and, and you lose body weight, sometimes your strength will suffer. That, that's kind of part of the process. But you strive to keep your strength up even as you're losing body fat. Uh, so progressive weight training workouts, Step one, you have to do that if you want to maximize your lean gains while you're losing body fat. And step two, shoot for that one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. That's going to provide the raw materials that your body needs to maintain or even gain a lean muscle while you're losing body fat. That's going to be the biggest ones. 
uh, avoid overtraining, getting adequate rest and recovery and sleep. I mean, all those kinds of things will come into play. But the, the two big ones, consistent with the weight training and consistent with the protein intake, and that will help you to minimize muscle loss while trying to get ripped. Okay, exercise for testosterone boost. Weight training is the best thing that you can do to naturally enhance your testosterone. If you get stronger in the gym through weight training, that's indirectly going to help to carry over and improving your overall testosterone levels. So high intensity exercise, along with adequate recovery, is going to help you with that. What's your opinion on Huel? H E H U E L. I don't even know what that is. I'll have to look it up afterwards. Um, what else we got? Thank you for your. This is from Darius. He says thanks for your answers. He says he's from Romania and a big fan for the past four years. Well, I'm glad you enjoy the videos and uh, cool. Got, got followers from all over the world. I've never been to Romania. I've never been to Europe before. That's definitely somewhere on my. Uh, bucket list of places to travel. I would love to, uh, to, to, you know, I'd love to backpack across Europe. That would be such a cool trip. A friend of mine did that a few years back, uh, and he absolutely loved us, right? He, I remember meeting up with him afterwards, and he was just sharing stories and pictures and stuff, and it was just fascinating to, to hear. I think um, him and his father and his brother, the three of them went off, and they did it for uh, like a full month, just backpacked across Europe. So that's something I would love to do sometime. Okay. Um, Stanley Studd is saying, Lee, you're a good guy. Good humor. I'm glad you appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Blaha and Mark says, tired of this guy and his bodybuilding fluff and pump. All right. If you're tired, why are you watching? If you don't want to, if you're tired of watching my video chats and you're tired of my videos, then what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Go watch somebody else. <laughs> uh, next we have Azim is joining us. Or he's, oh, he's, he's been joining us. even if he posted several questions already, but he says, Lee, Considering the last question about chest, do I need incline and decline presses? Wouldn't just regular presses and flies do the trick for building the chest? Uh, if I think of it only as major and minor. Personal preference, all right? I'll give you some examples. Uh, when it comes to uh, building the chest, I'm a big fan of uh, different bench press exercises. I mean, I find the incline press a really good one. Uh, I also like the flat press. Um, I find those two very helpful. When it comes to dumbbell flies, I personally prefer an incline dumbbell fly over a flat fly. Now, I may do a flat fly from time to time, but for some reason I find that just the angle of the shoulder it doesn't feel very good when I do a flat fly. I, I like to do either an incline fly or maybe something like a cable crossover where I'm doing the fly more in, in a decline position. I find that the flat angle with the hands across the body, I find that that's hard on my shoulders. So, again, this is a personal preference thing, right? So, I mean, depending on your mobility and your, and your joint flexibility and all that, you may have uh, a personal preference in terms of what angle you use to train your chest when, when it comes to your bench presses and your flies and all that. So, experiment with the different angles and the different exercises and pay attention to what works the best for you and use that with your workouts. So, for example, if, if you find a decline press works your chest good, feels good, hey, by all means, use it. And if you find that flat bench works good, use that, right? If you find the incline bench works, use that. I mean, uh, everyone's going to have their own personal preference. I remember, uh, like, reading some stuff about Dorian Yates. Like, back in the day, he used to do a lot of decline presses because he found that more effective for his chest than the flat press. So, you know, don't go getting hung up on the specific exercises. Some people will respond better to different moves because we all have different body types and different, you know, uh, joint mobility and things like that. So you really need to find what works the best for you. Benjamin is joining us. He says, good videos, good explanations. Thank you for uploading your videos. Well, thank you, Benjamin. I do appreciate your comment. Uh, Gustavo is joining us. He says he's 40 years old. He wants to start working out again. He stopped last August. What do you recommend to start doing? Get your ass in the gym. That's step number one. Uh, 
I have a basic total body workout that you can follow to get started with. Just head to the main Total Fitness Bodybuilding YouTube channel. Do a search for Lee Hayward's Beginner's Total Body Workout. Great, more, great one to start with. And a tip that I'm going to give you for your first month back, just go through the motions. Purposely train light. Purposely stop your sets short of failure. Just go through the motions and develop the habit of going to the gym and working out on a regular basis. Don't go getting hung up on the weights that you used to lift back in the day. Don't go getting hung up on trying to train to failure and, you know, no pain, no gain, all that kind of crap. Just get used to going to the gym and going through the motions. Just build that habit, that consistency, because that's ultimately what you need. If you try and go to the gym and you do too much too soon, you're going to, one, cause a lot of unnecessary aches, pains, and soreness, which is going to make it very uncomfortable to try and work out consistently when you're constantly in pain. Or two, even worse, you're probably going to end up pulling, tearing, or straining something and injuring yourself, which is going to just slow the process down even more. So when you're starting back to the gym as a beginner or, or coming back to the gym after a layoff, just go through the motions. It's it's okay to do easy workouts. It's okay to, to not exert yourself 100%. Again, just go through the motions. Take it easy. Do that for the first month. And then after the first month, then you can gradually start picking up the intensity and pushing yourself a little harder and, and all that. But ease your way into it. That's, that's the best piece of advice that I can give you. And that's going to help you with your long-term uh, programming, your long-term uh, consistency. All right, another question. I want to lose 3 to 4% body fat without losing muscle. I'm 19, biceps are near 17, everything's good, but the fat is there. Uh, we, we covered a lot of stuff there about losing body fat. Like say, daily cardio, uh, con consistent uh, with your protein intake, protein and veggies, all that basic stuff. Make sure you're in a caloric deficit. Boom. Uh, what do you think of diet soda while cutting? You, you can certainly cut and consume diet soda. I mean, it's, it's not going to prevent you from losing body fat. From a practical point of view, I'm not a fan of diet soda. Uh, I feel better and healthier without it. So I, I don't drink any soda personally. Now, back in the day, I used to be, you know, I, I could even venture to say I used to be sem somewhat addicted to diet soda. I was drinking it every darn day. I mean, probably, you know, a liter or more of diet soda a day. Uh, especially while I was training for fat loss because I used to think of it as this uh, calorie-free treat, if you will. So I was just guzzling diet soda every single day. And, uh, you know, I, it worked. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're doing enough stuff right, you can still do a few things that are not so right and still make progress. For example, like if, if you're training consistently, you're dieting good, you're doing your cardio, you're doing all that, but then you have a few little vices that are probably not helping. If, as long as you're doing more to move you in the right direction, you can still make progress. But I think ultimately, if you stick to like water and you know green tea and, and some natural beverages versus you know soda, I think you'll be much better off. And that includes diet soda. So, right. I, I, if you want more information about it, I actually made a video talking about diet soda. Just do a, a search Lee Hayward diet soda, and I go into details and I actually share more about my personal experience of of when I used to drink soda and when I quit the soda and how I found that it affected my, my body, my metabolism, my appetite and all that kind of stuff. Okay, another question. I'm 6'4 tall, 260 pounds. I'm overweight. Is 200 grams of protein per day too much or even too little for maintaining muscle mass while being in a deficit? What I would recommend is try and figure out what your lean body mass is and just get a body fat tester or, or if you want, just do a, a, even a, a ballpark estimate. Like how much weight do you want to lose, right? If you say you're 260 pounds, let's just say you want to lose 50 pounds, right? Just ballpark. So we'll say that you have 210 pounds of lean mass. Shoot for 210 grams of protein per pound or 210 grams of protein per day. Right, one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass is a good place to start. Right, that's a good place to start. Now you can always adjust it up or down based on how your body responds, but initially that that's where I would recommend uh, your starting point. 
Okay. Geez, I'm after going way over an hour, but that's okay. I'll answer a couple more. Uh, using only free weights in your workouts, what are your thoughts? If you only have free weights available, then yeah, you can only use free weights. But from a practical point of view, I like to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I like to use machines and free weights and body weight exercises. There's advantages to all the different forms of strength training exercises. So why not use them all, right? Why, why just limit yourself? Um, I mean, free weights, some of the benefits, obviously, is you can do big basic exercises like bench presses and squats and deadlifts. I mean, those are moves that work really well with free weights. Uh, there's other exercises that work really well with machines, you know, like a, a pull downs, cable machines, leg extensions, leg presses. Those are some really good machine exercises, and you can't really duplicate those movements with free weights. Uh, when it comes to body weight exercises, you know, there's pull ups and push ups. Um, various types of abdominal work. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do with just your body weight. So why not use the best of all the different tools that we have available, the machines, the free weights, and the body weight exercises to, to structure the best workout possible. Do, 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 do. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a follow-up to a question I, or to a comment I made earlier. It says, if you consider coming to Europe, just send me a message and I can guide you through our country. Yeah, okay, I do appreciate that. And that's that's something I will definitely do. I mean, I've done that in the past when I've traveled to different places. I just posted out a message either on my social media or sent out an email. And I've met up with some really cool people who've been following me online. You know, So I definitely like to do that from time to time, meet up with people uh, in, when I do travel. Okay. From non-existent says thanks for the answer great videos love your channel you're welcome I definitely appreciate the comments and support and adaptive androids got a question saying can you incorporate a heavy strict curl training to a 5x5 five five program yes you can you can do more smaller isolation exercises and still have them fit in with a five by five program uh, see the thing you have to realize you can do low rep training for isolation moves but you want to do so so that it's strict and controlled form see one of the problems when people do heavy low rep training is they tend to really push the limits of, of the weight that they're lifting and Sometimes they use a bit of explosiveness, a bit of momentum, a bit of cheating in order to handle heavier weight for the lower reps. But like, for example, you could do a bicep curl and do really strict form, no swinging, no cheating, no momentum, and hit momentary muscular failure at five reps and do so safely, right? You can do that. It doesn't have to be these ballistic explosive movements. So if you're going to use isolation exercises for lower reps, make sure that you're doing very strict form and, and it's a pure muscular contraction and you're not trying to cheat and swing the weight up because it's when you're just swinging and cheating and heavy weights that's when injuries is more likely to happen but if you maintain control and keep it a strict muscular contraction uh, your risk of, of injury is, is quite low all right, guys, I'm going to get ready and clue it up. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for your, your questions, comments, and support. I always enjoy doing these video chats with you. So uh, the way this is going to work now, I'll have the replay posted up within the uh, – well, as soon as I finish the, the video chat, the replay is going to be posted automatically. But I'm going to go through it and actually timestamp all the different questions and have that posted as well. So if you'd like to go back and uh, review specific questions, you can do so. And that applies to all my video chats. If you want to go back over some past video chats that I've done, I, most of them are all outlined with the, the questions and the timestamps so that you can jump to the specific questions that interest you the most. All right. Well, I'm going to get ready and clue it up. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. I will talk to you next Friday. Take care. Over and out.